So in this clip we'll look at some of the methods you can use to study the level of alertness in a normal waking consciousness as well as the use of devices to distinguish between REM and non-REM sleep. The best device we can use is an EEG which detects, amplifies and records the electrical activity of the brain in the form of the brain waves that it detects. I've already gone into a fair bit of detail about this in a previous clip, so check my channel for more detail on that. Moving on to a EOG, electrooculogram. Gram meaning measure, electro meaning electrical activity, ocular meaning eyes. And note the placement of the electrodes just under the eye on those eye muscles that control eye movements. Make sure when you provide an explanation of an EOG that you use the DARE acronym. It detects, amplifies and records the electrical activity. D-A-R-E, detect, amplify and record electrical activity of what? The eye muscles that control eye movements. An EOG is useless for determining levels of alertness during a normal waking consciousness but it's highly useful in sleep studies in indicating whether the sleeper is in REM or non-REM. So when you're explaining this, if we were using an EOG in a sleep lab, you would say that during REM sleep it would detect, amplify and record a high or higher level of electrical activity in comparison to non-REM sleep. So therefore, again, using it in a sleep lab, it would detect and amplify and record a low level of electrical activity when the sleeper is experiencing slow rolling eye movements. An EMG, electromyogram, so measures the electrical activity of the muscles and in a sleep study we attach electrodes to the chin to provide an indication of muscle tone or tension. But an EMG can also be used in a normal waking consciousness, particularly to do with biofeedback and getting a measure of the tension in the neck muscles which is a cause of chronic migraines that might be experienced as a result of stress. The patient can learn to control and reduce that muscle tension by getting feedback from the EMG device as part of the biofeedback process. You'll learn about that in Unit 4. So again, be descriptive when you're describing the functionality of an EMG. Use the DARE acronym. It detects, amplifies and records the electrical activity of the muscles, providing an indication of muscle tone or tension. So generally during a normal waking consciousness, it would detect and amplify and record a higher level of electrical activity of the muscles as opposed to the electrical activity of the muscles when in an altered state. Specifically, when we're talking about a sleep study and trying to provide an indication of whether the sleeper is in REM or non-REM, it would detect and amplify and record a lower level of electrical activity of the muscles when in REM sleep due to REM paralysis, that is, paralysis of the muscles from the neck down. So during non-REM sleep, it would detect, amplify and record a higher level of electrical activity of the muscles indicating a higher level of muscle tone or tension. Other physiological measures that you need to know in the VCE course, galvanic skin response, body temperature and heart rate. All of these provide a measure of level of arousal. So generally when we're in a normal waking consciousness we'd have a higher level of arousal than in an altered state. There are exceptions to this, like for instance, if we're under the influence of a psychedelic drug which accelerates nervous system activity, like let's say LSD, speed, something like that, then all of these would potentially go up. Likewise, if we were, say, asleep and we had a fever, again, body temperature could go up to, say, 38 and a half degrees, GSR could be up, etc. So, again, generally, when we're in a normal waking consciousness, these measures would be higher, but there are exceptions. Specifically, the GSR provides a measure of the electrical conductivity of the skin, which will increase with arousal. So during a normal waking consciousness, generally, as I said before, it would detect a higher level of 
electrical conductivity of the skin or a lower level of resistance. In terms of REM versus non-REM sleep, generally we have a higher state of physiological arousal during REM sleep, so we'd have a higher GSR in REM as opposed to non-REM. And just to finish off, so again in terms of body temperature and heart rate, generally when we're in a normal waking consciousness there's a higher level of arousal, hence our body temperature would be slightly higher, likewise our heart rate, depending on the type of activity we're doing. Again, exceptions to this, psychedelic drugs, fevers, etc. During REM sleep, even though we have that REM paralysis of the muscles, there's still a higher level of physiological arousal during REM sleep. So in terms of body temperature, it's slightly higher than when in a non-REM sleep, particularly in comparison to a deep sleep, stage 3 and 4 of non-REM, in terms of the heart rate, slightly higher during REM sleep and more erratic.